Chapter 17 The Ramadan As Queequeg's Ramadan, or fasting, Jesus Christ. Chapter 17 The Ramadan as Queequeg's Ramadan, or fasting and humiliation, was to continue all day, I did not choose to disturb him till towards nightfall, for I cherish the greatest respect towards everybody's religious obligations, never mind how comical, and could not find it in my heart to undervalue even a congregation of ants worshipping a toadstool, or those other creatures in certain parts of our earth who, with a degree of Footsmanism, uh, quite unprecedented in other planets, bowed down before the torso of a deceased landed proprietor merely on account of the inordinate possessions yet owned and rent in his name. I, I say we, good Presbyterians, Presbyterian Christians, should be charitable in those things and not fancy ourselves so vastly superior to other mortals, pagans and whatnot, because of their half-crazy conceits on these subjects. There was Queequeg now, certainly entertaining the most absurd notions about Yojo and his Ramadan, but what of that? Queequeg thought he knew what he was about, I suppose. He seemed to be content and there, let him rest. Uh, all our arguing with him would not avail, let him be, I say, and heaven have mercy on all of us, Presbyterians and pagans alike, for we are all somehow dreadfully cracked about the head and sadly need mending. Towards evening, when I felt assured that all his performances and rituals must be over, I went up to his room and knocked at the door, but no answer. I tried to open it, but it was fastened inside. Queequeg, said I softly through the keyhole. All silent. I say, Queequeg, why don't you speak? It's Ishmael. But all remained still as before. I began to grow alarmed. I had allowed him such abundant time. I thought he might have had a apoplectic fit. I looked through the keyhole, put the door opening into an odd corner of the room. The keyhole prospect was but a crooked and sinister one. I could only see part of the footboard of the bed and the line of the wall. Nothing more. I was surprised to behold, resting against the wall, the wooden shaft of Queequeg's harpoon, which the landlady the evening previous had taken from him before mounting to the chamber. That's strange, thought I. But at any rate, since the harpoon stands yonder, and he seldom or never goes abroad without it, therefore he must be inside here, and no possible mistake. Queequeg! Queequeg! All still. Something must have happened. Apoplexy. Apoplexy. I tried to burst open the door, but it stubbornly resisted. Running downstairs, I quickly stated my suspicions to the first person I met, the chambermaid. La la, she cried. I, 
I thought something must be the matter. I went to make the bed after breakfast and the door was locked and not a mouse to be heard. And it's just been, been just so silent ever since. But I thought me, maybe you had both gone off and locked your baggage in for safekeeping. La la mom, mistress, murder, Mrs. Hussey, apoplexy. And with those cries, she ran towards the kitchen. I, I following. Mrs. Hussey soon appeared with a mustard pot in one hand and a vinegar cruet in the other, having just broken away from the occupation attending to the casters and scolding her little black boy meantime. Woodhouse, cried I, which way to it? Run for God's sakes and fetch something to pry open the door. The ax, the ax, he's had a stroke, depend upon it. And so saying, I was unmethodically rushing upstairs again empty-handed and mrs hussey interposed the mustard pot and vinegar cruet and the entire caster of her countenance what's the matter with you young man get the axe for god's sakes run for the doctor someone while i pry it open look here said the landlady quickly putting down the vinegar cruet so as to have one hand free look here are you talking about prying open any of my doors? And with that, she seized my arm. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, shipmate? What's the matter with you, shipmate? What's the matter with you, shipmate? What's 